The Seven Crimes of Kevin update, sorry, I mean Calervo update has just dropped and brought alongside it its titular character, Calervo. Fortunately, being an affiliated creator, DE has given me the new updates items for free, so big thanks to them. And with all that being said, let's get on to it. Calervo's first ability is what many of us have wanted in Warframe for years at this point, a true teleport button. Holding the ability keys will cause Calervo to almost instantly teleport to the location he was looking at. This teleport does scale off range and will keep Calervo's momentum and direction when performed, so do keep note of that when using it. Secondly, and arguably more important, tapping the ability while aiming at an enemy will also have him teleport to the target and strike them with a heavy attack. Conveniently, his passive also grants melee weapons 75% heavy attack efficiency and 100% more heavy attack windup speed, making this feel very smooth. Now, coming to what is just so insane about this ability, using either the heavy attack teleport or normal teleport grants Calervo a flat increase in crit chance to all melee attacks. With just 100% strength, this is 200% more flat CC, giving you guaranteed orange crits on any melee. Strength mods attribute to this, giving double their value, which means something like Transient Fortitude gives 110% more on top of this giving all melees guaranteed red crits for however long your duration is. This is also his helmet, albeit with a lower floor on both stats, but is it crazy to say this might not even be his best ability? One very interesting thing about Calervo is his complete lack of shields, not one single point. His 2 solves this by giving him a unique stat, Overguard. Overguard has been present on our enemies since last year, but just now are Warframe starting to gain access to it through their abilities, with Rhino's Iron Skin also being changed over to Overguard in this update. Recompense surrounds Calervo in daggers, the ones that just so happen to be embedded in his body. With an 8 meter base radius, every enemy struck by these daggers restores health to Calervo if he is at less than max, but every dagger that does not hit an enemy will remove health. If Calervo is at max health when the daggers connect with enemies, he will generate Overguard. Importantly, the daggers auto-track to enemies, so if looking to not self-damage yourself, just don't cast it when you're not near any enemies. Overguard acts as a second layer of health similar to shields with some key differences. First, losing all your overguard does not give you a shield gate or anything similar, but while you have overguard, you are completely immune to any knockdowns, crowd controls, etc. etc. There is a cap on the overguard at 5000 with each dagger at base granting 200, the same enemy can also be hit multiple times. While not necessarily doing anything special for him, this ability is necessary for his survival so it does have a place in this build. Moving on to what I just... Damn, this ability is so strong, guys. Collective Curse has Calervo send out a wave of energy in front of him. Any enemies hit by this wave are linked, taking a percentage of damage done to any other target on their own health. At base, if I shoot this enemy, all other linked targets take 50% of the damage I deal to the main target. Already sounding too good? Yeah, just wait. 200% strength allows us to increase this damage distribution to 100%, which makes every enemy take full damage. This translates to everything, by the way. Even though it does not carry over status effects like Slash, the dot damage it does and the type of damage it is considered, which is true damage in this case, is still taken into account. Obviously, you can see the synergies appear here. Calervo's 1 gives you some insane heavy attack benefits alongside giving you permanent red crits on said heavy attacks, which normally would use up all your combo after the first one, but nope, not here. The wave of energy he casts comes out at a 65 degree angle and does go through walls. While the angle cannot be adjusted, the amount of distance it can cover does scale with range and allows you to absolutely nuke entire tiles, killing enemies you can't even see. Like I said before, the damage is copied exactly to all enemies, so priming one enemy with viral before launching a heavy attack teleport onto them with a forced slash melee and yeah, you just, you just evaporate them all. Now his fourth ability, Storm of Ukko, besides having the name of that one capture mission we've all ran to death, is... Not bad actually, but not good enough to warrant not being swapped out. Regardless, I will cover it briefly. Casting will have Calervo pause before launching an array of daggers into the air, which create a 10 meter radius around Calervo, dropping daggers from the sky which deal slash damage with a guaranteed slash proc and a chance to stagger enemies. This ability does contribute to his combo counter very quickly, but he already has such high heavy attack efficiency and his 2 does this as well, that its use kind of falls off when really diving into his kit. So we're going to actually swap it off for Shooting Gallery. I've covered this ability fully in a short video on it previously, explaining why I believe it is very underrated and probably one of, if not the best survivability helmets in the entire system. It prevents enemies from being able to shoot you while active, 
and since a lot of Kalervo's other survivability comes from killing enemies before they can kill him, it works as a buffer between first seeing a group and then killing them all of course. Paired with the augment, Muzzle Flash, and you get some of the best crowd control in the entire game. Muzzle Flash charges off of kills, needing 6 before proccing on your next attack. These kills can come from anything, weapons, or abilities, so luckily, when chaining a large group of enemies with his third and then insta-killing them all, it does contribute to that charge, most times fully topping it off, meaning that almost every attack will launch a massive blind that works on all enemies, yes, Eximus units too. Using his 1 to heavy attack teleport onto a target also does proc this blind, so this crowd control works at almost any level on any playstyle. Building Calervo is slightly challenging since he really wants high range for both his 3 and shooting gallery, yet also wants at least 200% strength for full damage redistribution, which speaking of that quickly, I put out a quick PSA outlining a very odd mechanic it has with armor strip, so go give that a watch when you're done with this video, it's relatively short, yet very odd, but intriguing. Anyways, back to his stats. Two builds exist for him, one of them does require a single red shard, but its stats are better, so let's cover that one first. Like I said, Range is very important for Calervo, so using all the range mods besides the Exilus one gives us 265%, which gives the Teleport 66 meters of range, his third also getting the same value, and Shooting Gallery gets 42 meters, while the Blind gets 31. This does drop our strength to 40% though, so we need to build that back up to 200%. Molt Augmented gives us back the negative range from Overextended, while a combination of Growing Power, Transient Fortitude, and Power Drift gives us another 95%, totaling to 195 for power strength. This is unfortunately 5% less than the threshold we need, so that single red Archon Shard does come in to fill that remaining gap up. There are other ways to do this, without the red shard or the ambers that I have here for casting speed. Matarai gives 50% more casting speed on transference in, and when paired with sling strength it gives you 40% more, which means you can actually drop both growing power and power drift in favor of other mods, but does mean that every 20 seconds you will need to go back into your operator for the sling buff. But you may run into energy issues here as this is a very spammy frame. If choosing to not gather it from any conditional sources, you can also just drop Augur Reach for Augur Secrets, which will put you above the threshold while lessening your range slightly. Calervo is a very spammy frame, so Arcane Energize and Xenoric are needed to sustain his energy with this build, and even then, I still use Streamline to lessen those energy costs. Prime Continuity brings our duration back into the positives and puts Shooting Gallery over 30 seconds, which is most comfortable to me. Rolling Guard plays a very important role in staying alive on him due to his lack of shields. While a good build on Calervo is important to successfully play him, a good melee weapon is equally as important as he builds them slightly different than other frames do. While maybe not the best, my choice is the Inodem due to it being both a great weapon for heavy attacks and just general hack and slash. This is what I would recommend for him since he does not need to put crit chance on his melee weapons due to his first ability of course. This is just a good heavy attack killer alongside being able to normally melee enemies and do lots of damage. Calervo is very strong and I don't think anyone is denying that, but he has some clear issues due to his lack of just shields. Overguard is not a suitable replacement for them with just how much damage enemies can do in a single shot on the steel path, so while this build does work well, it requires you to be really on your A-game and moving around a lot aggressively. Luckily though, it is fun, and that's really the most important thing. Thank you to all of my YouTube and Patreon supporters who helped make this all possible. The links are in the description where you can check it out yourself and decide if I am worthy of your money. Thank you to Horde Platypus, The Mad Monk, Scotty Nose, Young Mung, Bad Robot, Jade Rabbit, Shrike, Sage, Pretend, Seidu, Rave, Calamity, Intellectual, Nessie, SOS, Nova, Boxy, Slothy, Corrupt, Heath, and Nova. Your support is very, very appreciated. Thank you for helping make this all possible. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I hope this video was informative and helpful, and I will see all of you guys in the next one. Peace!